Hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. I'm thrilled to tell you that tonight we have a story that Alicia has written with the help of not one but two of our lovely reviewers. We enjoy hearing from you so much and the story suggestions are always wild and varied. Our talented writers are weaving together all your ideas, so listen out in future episodes for how they bring your idea to life. For now, thanks to Love My Lip Gloss, who asked for a water dragon story, and also thanks to listener Zoe, who suggested the name Emerald. Now get comfy in your bed and settle down to listen to tonight's sleepy story where we meet an adorable little baby water dragon named Enon and his good friend Emerald as they embark on their special quest that all baby dragons must complete. Let's find out what it is. This is The Baby Water Dragon by Alicia Ainsley. Magical creatures are truly special. Could you imagine how amazing it would be to possess your own magical powers and be able to do incredible things such as fly or make things appear out of thin air? If you could be a magical creature, what would you be? What special powers would you like to possess? What remarkable adventures will you embark upon? Have a think. Have you got it? Well, for one little baby, born in the heart of Sleepy Forest, he wanted to be nothing more than what he was, because this little baby was lucky enough to be a baby water dragon. Have you heard of water dragons before? Or fire dragons? Or earth dragons? Or maybe even air dragons? No? Well, don't worry. I will tell you all about them. There are many types of dragon that exist within Sleepy Forest. They all look very different and have very different types of skills and powers, but they are all equally as friendly and kind as each other. All types of dragons work as a team with their own special duties to keep the inhabitants of Sleepy Forest as happy as can be. As you can probably guess, fire dragons breathe fire from their mouths. They're very large, with black and grey scaly skin that helps them blend in with the rocks on the mountainside or the edge of a volcano. On particularly chilly days, they help keep the sun warm by breathing their magical fire onto it, heating it up and keeping it burning bright. And when the animals of Sleepy Forest are cold, the fire dragons make sure that they all have a warm fire to heat themselves up around and cook their food on. The fire dragons are very helpful creatures. The air dragons spend their days flying through the skies. Their scales are white and silver to blend in with the clouds in the sky, but they return to earth to sleep each night. The air dragons have huge wide wings that spread out like paragliders and assist them in soaring through the air to keep watch over everyone in Sleepy Forest. The earth dragons cannot fly. Instead, they stay on the ground and look after the earth. Earth dragons are green to blend in with the grass and the trees that they tend to. Earth dragons are the gardeners of Sleepy Forest, and they keep everything looking in tip-top condition by trimming the bushes with their talons, and creating paths for animals to walk along by stomping the ground with their big, clumpy feet. They have a great eye for detail, and are especially good at arranging flowers. And finally, the water dragons. They live within the rivers and lakes of Sleepy Forest. They start off with blue skin to blend in with the waters, but their skin can change colour to match the shades of the riverbeds. They are very good at camouflaging themselves. Water dragons can swim faster than any other creature, and they love to dance and sing. 
Water dragons are the key protectors on the ground of Sleepy Forest, as they can move through the rivers unseen and see the things that the air dragons cannot spot from up in the sky. All dragons are rare, and new baby dragons are only born once in a blue moon. All of the dragons lay their eggs and keep them together in the heart of Sleepy Forest. When the blue moon comes, it shines its mystical lunar light down onto the dragon's nest and the eggs begin to hatch. Nobody knows what type of dragons will emerge from the eggs. It's always a surprise. So on one particular night when the blue moon came and a nest of hatchlings began to be born into the world, the adult dragons looked on in eager anticipation. They couldn't wait to see how many of each type of dragon would be joining their tribe. The eggs hatched one by one. Crack, crack. The eggs crackled as tiny little scaly noses pushed their way out. First popped out an air dragon, and the adult air dragons flapped their wings with delight. The baby air dragon fluttered over to its family, using its teeny tiny silver wings to get there. Next, a fire dragon hatched, emerging from a plume of smoke within its eggshell. The little fire dragon coughed and spluttered from the smoke, and the adult fire dragons roared in celebration, guiding the little guy over to their group. Then another air dragon followed, and an earth dragon, then a baby fire dragon again, and an extra earth dragon. The adult water dragons were starting to worry that there would be no baby water dragons born this time. But then, when the last egg remained, everyone waited patiently as the baby dragon inside delicately pressed its way through the shell. The baby dragon slithered out of the egg, shimmering with beautiful silvery white skin, with two dinky curved horns on the top of its head. All of the adult dragons looked at this baby with intrigue. It appeared to be a baby water dragon, but with pale skin instead of blue like everybody else. The baby water dragon gazed up at everyone around, and it smiled and giggled with glee as it slithered over to its family of water dragons. The adult water dragons tilted their heads up to the sky and released a soothing, harmonious song into the air to welcome the little baby to their family. The baby was promptly named Enon, and all of the dragon families went their separate ways to begin raising the new babies in the ways of their dragon kind. Baby Enon, the water dragon, might have looked different to the rest of his family, but he was a naturally gifted water dragon. Enon could swim as fast as the adult straight away. He slipped and slid through the rivers that ran through Sleepy Forest with ease, and even some of the older dragons struggled to keep up with him. All water dragons are naturally gifted at singing, and Enon's sweet voice complemented the voices of his peers perfectly. Enon delighted in joining in with their group songs, and would leap and dance through the water as they sang. He had a joy and a spark for life that inspired everyone around him. On Enon's first day at Dragon School, there had never before been a keener student, Anon sat right at the front of the class, in front of the teacher, eager to learn more about the world around him and his fellow dragon kind. Can I sit next to you? Enon heard a little voice ask from behind him. 
he twisted his long neck around to see a green baby earth dragon standing behind him. Yes, of course you can, Enon agreed, and the little green dragon plonked herself down next to him. I'm Emerald, the green dragon replied. Today is my first day at dragon school. Enon smiled and sat up straighter. It's my first day too, he said excitedly. My name is Enon. It's nice to meet you. The rest of the class of baby dragons settled down around them as the teacher began to speak. Their teacher was called Ms Blossom, and she was an earth dragon, just like Emerald. Good morning, everyone, Ms Blossom greeted them all warmly. Welcome to your first day at dragon school. We are going to learn lots of interesting things today, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you all. But first, let's start with something important. Can anyone tell me what a dragon's quest is? The young students all looked at Miss Blossom with blank, wide eyes. They were all silent. Nobody knew what she meant. Well, I am very pleased to be able to tell you all about it then. Miss Blossom smiled, sitting herself down in front of the mini dragons. All dragons protect the world and make sure that everything is running as it should be. But each dragon also has a special duty. Every dragon has a special human out there in the world. Your quest is to find your special human. And only then will you discover your true destiny. The baby dragons gasped and sighed with amazement. Wow! exclaimed Emerald. Enon was very intrigued by this exciting information. He loved the idea of an adventurous quest. How do we find our special human, Miss Blossom? Enon questioned his teacher, eager to know more. Nobody quite knows, Miss Blossom replied. Not all dragons find their special humans. Some dragons spend their whole lives searching, so if you find your human, then you are very lucky indeed. They say that all you can do is follow your instinct and follow the call of your heart, and you will find the one you are destined to protect. Anon and Emerald were blown away. The youngsters had thought that their only job was to look after Sleepy Forest. But somewhere there were others who needed their help even more. A special human, just for them. Enon and Emerald left their first day of school, feeling proud to be dragons and enthusiastic to learn even more. But they were particularly interested in the quest to find their special human. Do you think that we have special humans? Emerald asked Enon as they walked home from school. Of course we do, Enon proclaimed enthusiastically. The only reason some dragons haven't found theirs is because they haven't been looking hard enough. I'm going to find mine. I know it. Emerald and Enon went home that day and told their families all about what they had learnt at school. And the adult dragons were pleased that they had had such a nice time. But Enon couldn't stop thinking about his quest. That night, as baby Enon lay down to sleep, he thought about his special human and wondered what they might be like. 
As he drifted off to sleep, he envisioned a human boy glittering with gold in the middle of a pool of water. Enon could see that this boy was very special. Little Enon knew that he had to find him. The next day, Enon woke and decided that he was going to embark upon his quest. His family of water dragons told him that there was no need to rush, as he was only still a baby. He could go on his quest when he was older. But Enon was determined. He had a feeling that he was needed by his special human already, and he needed to go and find him. Enon packed a little bag to take with him, filled with a compass, some chocolate biscuits, and a little present to give to his special human once he found them. It was a shiny pebble that he had found at the bottom of the river in Sleepy Forest yesterday. He thought that it was rather beautiful, and he wanted to give it to his human when he met him. Enon set off on his journey through the forest. He didn't know exactly where to look, but he decided that if he didn't try, he would never know. Enon slinked his long, slippery, silver body into the river and started to swim. Instead of swimming at his usual fast pace, he slowed down and meandered through the rivers. If he swam too fast, then he might miss his special human, so he had to take it slow and go with the flow. Enon had been swimming through the rivers of Sleepy Forest for a few minutes when he spotted his school friend, Emerald the Earth Dragon, lying down by the side of the river. Hi, Emerald, he greeted her, popping up out of the water and surprising her. Oh, hello, Enon, she giggled, rolling over onto her green belly. Where are you going? Enon told her that he was going to search for his special human. Oh, can I come with you? Emerald begged excitedly. Maybe I can find my special human too. Enon happily welcomed her to join him on his quest. So... Emerald quickly grabbed a bag with a map, a banana, and a gift for her special human, too, in case she met them. She chose a cute white daisy that she had been admiring in the grass and placed it in her bag. The two baby dragons journeyed together through Sleepy Forest on their quest. Enon swam in the water while Emerald walked alongside on the banks of the river. After a while of walking around and not seeing anyone, they stopped for a break to consult their map. Where are all the humans? Enon queried, looking over Emerald's shoulder to take a closer look at the map. Emerald pointed to the land on the outskirts of Sleepy Forest. There are meant to be some humans there, and there are also meant to be some humans over there by the mountain. Emerald worked out, pointing at locations on the map. But I don't know if there are many humans here in Sleepy Forest. They might be really far away. Despite this news, Enon didn't feel disheartened. He knew that he would find his special human, no matter how far he had to travel to get to them. All of a sudden, they heard a rustling coming from the trees behind them. They turned around and saw a young dragon shaking and shimmying its way through the trees. 
the dragon was dancing. Hi, guys, the dragon greeted them with a big, friendly smile. Why are you dancing? Emerald chuckled, mesmerized by the dragon's moves. The small, purple dragon replied, It's always a good time to dance. It makes you feel so much happier. Why don't you try it? Anon and Emerald started to boogie along with the dancing dragon and giggled with glee as they did. You're right. It does make you feel happier. Enon agreed as he twirled and whirled in the river. What's your name? The dancing dragon informed him that his name was Disco. Disco the dragon? Emerald repeated with amusement. That's a perfect name for you. Disco, Enon and Emerald boogied together until the baby dragons fell to the floor, laughing so hard that they couldn't dance any longer. Enon decided to take this opportunity to ask Disco if he knew where they could find some humans around Sleepy Forest. Disco suggested, Well... I just came back from a dance party with a family that lives in a tree house on the other side of the forest. You can find some humans there. Enon and Emerald were delighted that there were humans living so close by in the forest. They thanked Disco for his help and his little dance lesson, and they set back off on their quest to find the tree house. They walked for an hour longer and eventually came upon the giant tree house in Sleepy Forest. Here we are, Emerald declared excitedly. Shall we go say hello to the humans? Anon paused and thought. He didn't know if his special human was here or not and they couldn't just walk up to every human in the world to see if they were his special human. He decided to wait and see if when the family came outside, he felt drawn to them. After all, their teacher, Miss Blossom, had said that a dragon had to follow the call of their heart to find their special human. Enon and Emerald sat down beneath the trees and waited to see if the family who lived in the treehouse came outside. Enon opened up his packet of chocolate biscuits and shared them with Emerald, and she split her banana in half and gave a piece to Enon. They waited patiently under the trees and rested their little legs. After some time, they were starting to get tired of waiting and began to drift off to sleep. At that moment, the front door of the treehouse creaked open and four children rushed outside and began climbing down the trunks of the trees to play on the forest floor. Enon hopped to his feet and watched the children intently. He looked from child to child and tried to focus. Was his heart telling him that his special human was any of these children? Did he recognize any of them from his dream about the golden boy that he had had the night before? But as he focused and thought, he found himself giving up. He didn't feel like any of these humans were the right one. Anon shook his head at Emerald, and she shook her head back at him. 
They brushed off their crumbs and pulled back out their map. We will have to go closer to the humans by the mountain, Emerald decided, pointing at the map. That's where the nearest people are from here. Enon and Emerald weren't ready to give up yet, and they moved their little bodies back into their original positions for their quest. Enon swimming through the water, and Emerald on the earth by his side. The baby dragons felt like they had been walking for hours and hours, and they were starting to think that they might not find their special humans today before they had to head home for dinner. They were close to the edge of Sleepy Forest, and they could see a big mountain top peeping up above the trees, far off in the distance. They weren't too far away now from the nearest humans. I think we're almost there, Emerald announced urging Anon onwards, despite how tired she was. Maybe we should use your compass, just to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. The baby dragons consulted their compass, and tried to work out which way they needed to go to get to the human kingdom. However, Neither of them had ever used a compass before, and they were getting very confused. All of a sudden, they heard footsteps trudging down a nearby path through the trees. They turned to look, and to their delight, they saw a human man walking along with several logs of chopped wood underneath his arm. Enon felt his heart begin to flutter, and he felt drawn to follow the man. He swam closer to the path that the man was walking along, and inspected him closer. The man had brown hair and a thin, bristly beard. He wore big, clumpy boots, and carried a satchel on his shoulder. The man had kind eyes, but they looked very tired, like he hadn't slept properly in days. As Enon watched the man walk along, blissfully unaware of the two baby dragons nearby, he felt a magnetic pull to follow him. Follow the call of your heart, Enon reminded himself. Enon secretly followed the man through to the edge of the forest, an emerald tiptoed behind, jumping from tree to tree so that she remained out of sight too. When they reached the end of the forest, they saw a great big kingdom spread up the side of the mountain. There were houses and castles and turrets snaking all the way up the mountainside, and lots of humans were bustling around the streets, going about their business. To Enon's delight, there were lots of waterfalls and rivers running all the way up the mountainside too, providing him with the perfect way to visit the kingdom unnoticed. Enon and Emerald followed the man all the way up into the kingdom and to the man's house. He lived in a little stone house with a workshop on the side. Enon and Emerald crept up to one of the windows and peeked inside. Do you think that this man... Is your special human? Emerald whispered to Enon. I think so, Enon replied, his heart beating faster and harder than before. I feel all tingly inside. 
Enon and Emerald watched as the man placed the wood in the fireplace and attempted to light the fire, but to no avail. He rubbed his hands together and blew hard into them, trying to warm them up. Oh no, cried Anon. He went to get firewood from the forest because he's so cold. If only I was a fire dragon and I could help him. When the man left the room again, Emerald quietly hopped through the open window and over to the fireplace. I know how to make fire without breathing it out of my mouth, she announced proudly. All you have to do is rub two sticks together as fast as you can, like this. Emerald grabbed two small sticks that the man had gathered from the forest and started to rub them together vigorously. All of a sudden, a spark lit and the sticks caught fire. Anon was absolutely flabbergasted. The earth dragons were very smart indeed. Emerald placed the sticks of fire on top of the pile of wood that the man had brought home and the fireplace lit up with warmth and light. Emerald quickly hopped back out of the window as the man and his wife came into the room. They saw that the fire had lit up, and they laughed with confusion. We must have a guardian angel, the man declared, grateful for the fire to warm their home. Little did he know that they were even luckier than having guardian angels. They had dragons to protect them. Anon and Emerald watched the man and his wife sit down at the kitchen table and begin to prepare their food for dinner. However, as Enon watched them, he felt the pull to look through another window to the house. He slithered up to the next window, just a bit further along, and peered into the room. Inside was a sleeping newborn baby in a crib. Enon's heart suddenly grew warm, and he felt overwhelmed with happiness. He gazed at the little mite sleeping so peacefully in its crib, and Enon recognised the baby straight away. This child was the golden boy that he had seen in his dream. This is my special human, Enon whispered to Emerald contentedly. His name is Fenris. Emerald gasped and smiled as she observed the tiny sleeping baby. How do you know his name? she asked Enon. Enon smiled at the sweet child, and his heart began to glow with shimmers of gold that radiated out of his chest. I just know, he replied. Anon and Emerald watched the baby Fenris sleep for a while. They watched over him until his mother came into the room to check on him. Anon vowed that he would always be there to protect this special baby as they grew up together. He hoped that one day they would become great friends. Before long, the sun was beginning to set an emerald reminded Enon that they needed to return home to their families for dinner. Enon was disappointed to leave his special human when he had just found him, but he was pleased that he had completed his quest 
and now knew where to find his special human whenever he wanted to. Enon said goodbye to baby Fenris and promised that he would return as soon as he could. Then Enon and Emerald headed back home. It would be a long journey back. But luckily for Enon and Emerald, they had special dragon abilities that they could draw on to make the journey quicker. Enon turned to Emerald with a mischievous look in his eyes and suggested, Do you want to race home? Emerald giggled and replied, <laughs> Last one home is a rotten egg. Emerald set off running through the forest at her rampant dragon speed, and Enon thrust himself under the water and swam at a lightning speed through the rivers. The baby dragons were back at their homes before night fell, with a very impressive story to tell of how Enon, the baby water dragon, had found his special human already.